It's a long way from Bangkok to Udon Thani. But events in the capital are on everyone's minds. <laughs> the voices phoning in to the radio chat shows are indignant. They've heard what the protesters have been saying. That up here, people aren't smart enough to vote. That democracy doesn't work. There should be no distinction between high or low, between those with education and those who didn't finish school, says this man. We're all ties and we're all equal. The sense of outrage and injustice expressed here in the North East is inflamed by their memories of the time that they went onto the streets of Bangkok to oppose a government and received very different treatment from the security forces. There were some armed elements among the red shirt movement there. And they were confronting the army, not the police. Gun battles broke out. Then a full military operation. More than 90 died, most of them unarmed protesters. One of them was Plern Tianyum's brother, Wasan. Their family have been red shirts for years, thankful for the governing party's microcredit scheme that helps them to start a small business. There's no justice. Our side keeps retreating, and still there's no justice for us. We're not afraid. We will keep on supporting the red shirts. But every time we demonstrate, it seems we are wrong, that the other side will never accept us. Across much of rural Thailand, loyalty to the government remains stubbornly strong. Kam Seng Chai Tech's community is one of thousands that have declared themselves to be red villages, ready, they say, to defend the party they voted for. We won't accept another coup like in the old days. We will fight to keep the government we elected. And if the military tries a coup again, we are ready to come out, to die for democracy. The yawning gulf between Thailand's political factions is all too obvious here. I love you. <laughs> the man they still love, Taksin Shinawat, is the man that the other side detests and fears. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Udon Thani.